Okay, my BenQ uh, W5000 has started acting up. It's giving me uh, it's kind of a split screen with one screen screen overlapping the other. So I'm just going to take it apart and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it or not. Uh, maybe unplug all the connections and reseat them all. It's about, uh, I think it's 15 years old. So, so to get it apart, you have to do um, a couple things. You have to take out all the obvious screws, which are around this uh, side, this back cover here. Oops. This back cover here, I took out the screws on it. There were uh, four of that, four of them right there. And then the back cover just comes off easily. And then you can get out all the, uh, all the screws that are in the black plastic here. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or something all over around the back. Uh, this one with the white mark was a little bit longer. And then there's the front of the projector. This one with the white mark was a little bit longer, this middle one here. I don't know why this slight bit longer. Maybe it's just a fluke, but uh, then you can take off. Then you can uh, go underneath the projector. Pull out these two screws, which are hidden, kind of recessed in here. This one deep in here, this one deep in here. Then you can lift this cover, starting at the back. You can pop it forward to the front, but then the front's going to be stuck with these four clips here. One here, one here, one here, one here. I'll show you what they look like. If you can see that close up. Maybe this way is better. Those four clips go down in the front into this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot. So you have I, I took a butter knife and I stuck it up in the edge here and I gently pried it apart till that clip came apart. Same here. It's hard to get the knife in between the white plastic and the black plastic here. But it'll go if you're careful with it. I didn't break any of these clips. So that's what's holding it on there. To get these two front lens pieces off. This one for example. You can see here on this mounting screw. It just clips on. So if you turn it all the way this way. And then just give it a little bit more and then pull it straight off, like so. That's for the front one, and then the back one broke. This is old plastic, and uh, it's been hot. So you can see one tab is still intact, the other two are broken, but it does the same thing. It would have went on like, you can see it's a tight fit here for that screw, so I guess that's what broke it. But if you just push it on, and then turn it, it locks in place. So same thing, only this one turns the opposite way. You turn it all the way counterclockwise, give it one click, and then it'll just pull off gently because, oh, it doesn't break. Oh, it's a quite a tight, snug fit. So that gets those two rings off at the very beginning. It's the first thing you do, then you can start taking this all apart. So now I'm into the, the guts of it, I know there's, there's, there's the main fan for the bulb here. I'll check it and clean it. There's another fan down inside of it that may be fully full of dust and, and possibly that's what's causing the problem. So I want to get to that other fan deep in there, which I'm going to have to start pulling stuff apart. So, so far I've taken out this screw and this screw on the dust. Uh, this is just a cover where the bulb, the bulb went in here. So I took the bulb out and now I'm taking this top cover off. And it's got a piece of tape. Or well, I actually have to take this off first, I guess. See, there's a screw down here I'll have to get. Right here. So I'll take this one screw out. Oh, another screw right here. So we'll take another screw out. Anyhow, so I'll continue uh, taking stuff apart. It's all pretty obvious from here. If I come across any difficulties, I'll put them on the camera. So I can work with two hands. Okay, so I got this top metal plate off. There was a screw here, 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 and a longer screw over here. 
The next thing I'm going to do is take off this back uh, input cover. So this guy, there's a screw here, a screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here. And then there's one kind of hidden screw down in the corner, don't forget, right here. This little one that they've stuck off to the side here, I'm not sure why they wanted to put that one there. And this just comes off out of the way. Okay, we'll carry on. Okay, so the next thing I did was uh, disconnect the main board here. So there's many plugs. There's um, one, one, two, three, a ground screw that goes right there. There. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nothing on that one. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, nothing on that one, nothing on that one. So 13 plugs. You can't pull them by the wires. Don't grab the wires and try to pull the plug out. I actually I actually pulled some of these wires part way out. So when I put this plug back in, I've got to take a small, small, tiny screwdriver and push the wires into their, into their spots there. You're going to have to take a screwdriver and pry gently on one side of the plug and then the other side of the plug and then the other side of the plug until finally it works itself loose, prying on the the plug itself, not don't pull on the wires. Okay, so that's the main board out. There it is. Uh, there's one hidden screw way down here. So when this is in place in here, you have to put your screwdriver down on this corner here, right down in there, and get that with a magnetic screwdriver, lift that last screw out. Then it's just one screw, a long, long, longer screw than the rest go here. So there's one that's kind of not really hidden but it's right here so one here one here one here one here a long one here and one here one two three four five and a long one one two three four five and a long one yeah and then this will just lift out it takes this one wire with it you can see that set it off to the side here this wire comes with it it just I didn't have to unplug this wire because it's just going to go back in there so maybe I'll just plug it back in and then it's part of the all part of the main board okay so I found the other fan it's right here but it's not dirty it's not plugged with dust at all that I can see so I'm gonna have a quick look at it and see what I can find out Okay, so I pulled a few more things off. I pulled this top cover off. And this, there's another fan here I didn't know was there. This is the main bulb fan. It had a screw holding it in down there. Not a big deal. Um, all these fans are clean and all these fans are free. Um, I don't want to go any deeper. I pulled off the power supply cover and had a look in there. Uh, there's one, two, and a hidden screw down in here that holds the power supply cover on. And this, uh, this plug has to go through this window. Uh, this, this plug here. Oops, sorry. This plug here goes through this window and then plugs in, in there. Okay, you don't have to take every screw out of this board out. This screw can stay in. This screw comes out. This screw came out when this metal shield came off. That's this, this screw here. Is this one so it's out this screw can stay in this screw the longer one this is one of the longer ones comes out this one came out when the other corner of this uh, heat shield right there when that corner of that heat shield came out okay next thing I'm gonna do is pull this piece of foam out of here it just pulls out and now I can get at this screw back in there. I'm trying to get this big piece out right here. So I already took this screw out over here. I'm going to take that screw out and see if it'll come out. Okay, so I took out this screw, this screw, and this screw over here. And now this piece is loose. But I'm going to take, I'm going to take the wire that goes from this little servo motor and this, these two wires out of this white clip so I can lift this piece out as one. There's two clips that go on this metal piece I'm taking out. There's one here with a small wire that runs down into 
this fan right here and it's attached right here and then there was this wire this clip on this servo motor wire here this clip here went right on this screw here okay next thing I want to do is remove this little fan here and it's got one screw right down here right there so I take that screw out and take this fan out this big black cover for the power supply and there's one wire right here that goes through the hole here it's this wire that comes up and attaches to the screw here this wire so you got to unplug it from there so it can fit through the hole there's two screws here and one screw hidden down here for the power supply and it should just come out power supply cover Uh, not quite so simple. I'll have to have a quick better look here. This plug also has to be undone right here. This little guy right here by the looks of it Let's do that and see what happens Also under this power supply cover is the main AC line coming in here to this white plug So we'll get that And then this plug red and black plug over here and we'll get that and then this, then this just comes right out. Okay, the next thing I took off was uh, sitting right on the, where those these two screw holes are <clears throat> here and here. I don't want to touch that surface. This heat sink, heat uh, heat sink was on there. These two screws were in there, and they go in from the back here. So I just uh, it's kind of hard to get at. I used a, a bent screwdriver. And then I used uh, just a bit and turned it with my fingers. They're not very tight. Just shoved it in there and turned it with my fingers. Worked okay. So now I'm going to take off this, this the second uh, clamp that's holding the big chip on. And the way to do that is to take out these four screws. One, two, three, four. And then this big clamp comes off. Okay, I got the four, uh, these four long screws out. Now I'm going to take off this little clamp piece. That just comes out. Remember which way was up. Okay, the next thing I did was pull this big screen off of where that main card is. And um, it just pops off with these little... It's just held on by friction here. Uh, except on this end, there is these funny looking clip like this. And another one like that down here and you have to push them away and out so when they lock in they go in and then they slide in just a bit that's how they lock and then the rest of it just pushes on okay so here's the main board out I didn't disconnect all these connectors on top because I didn't want to do any of that if you're just gentle you can just move it around um, and you can see, I'll show you what the other side looks like, in case you want to see. It's got some kind of a mirror thing there. That's the big chip. So what I'd notice, I just set it in here gently for the time being. What I notice is there is heat shrink, a heat uh, sink compound on this surface. And I can see it's definitely hardened up. So I'm going to put some more silver thermal compound on this surface. Oh, there was one screw in this board right here that has to come out before it'll come out of this, this big metal case here. Just that one screw. Okay, I'm going to put all these pictures uh, included in the video and a link to the uh, PDFs, etc. in the description below. So this is the video board. This is right here is where the um, video chip would go. And if you have little dots on your screen, that's the, probably this chip. If you have your screen cutting in half and then s splitting side to side like mine was, then it's this, if you can see a little red circle right up here. Right there. I'll just zoom in here. It's either this little 5 volt power supply here in conjunction with possibly this little capacitor right down here. So that would be this capacitor. Not likely, most likely is this little 5 volt supply here. So that's the board. 
those are the two fit and that will cause this big chip over here to fail if this chip fails you can't re well you could replace it with very specialized tools and be very expensive you might as well just forget about it this little chip here uh, the five volt supply I bought that for 85 cents from Newark I'll put the link to that part in the description also uh, so that's the board that's the chip this is the little capacitor here right there I didn't have to do anything with it my problem is fixed and I didn't have to touch the capacitor this is the other 5 volt supply chip right here if you look close it's kind of hard to see in this picture but you see some yellowing in here uh, I don't know if that's from overheating or just from a excess flux I'm not sure but important to note in this picture this is a test point and you can see the trace running under here goes to this pad this is also a test point and you can see the big thick trace here goes to this pad and the reason I say that is because when I desoldered this chip and took it off I accidentally uh, pulled this pad right off the board all you have to do is take a little uh, razor knife and scrape off some of this green stuff here and then puts bridge solder you can bridge solder either from here right across to the new chip leg or I bridged it from my uh, I think I bridged it I think I scraped and bridged it right across the whole thing made a solder bridge right here so just be careful not to rip a pad off it's easy to get too much heat and have these pads come off so that's the little chip that failed we've got a picture of it removed right here so here's it come here's it off the board this pad has solder on it this pad kept solder this pad got ripped right off unfortunately so I just scraped along here and built a solder bridge and it, this is such a short distance it looks like it's uh, quite a ways on this picture because it's so blown up that's a couple millimeters from there to where and your little leg will stick out right about here I'll show you right now uh, this one I think so here's a solder bridge I built you can see right there I went from the test point also I scraped in here and I just blobbed the solder over and then when I put the new chip on I just went directly to the leg of the chip in this next picture here final picture and don't uh, don't hate don't hate on my solder joints because it's microscopic it's really hard to do this one I went in as, uh, after the fact and put an extra bit of solder because it didn't look like it was a hundred percent this one's 100% and this one's bridged from the test point over to the leg and this is the new chip uh, which I'll show you in a second here I also put the link to the to the uh, to the information sheet for that chip down below so it's this chip right here IRL ML 252 PBF and I bought that from uh, Newark for uh, 85 cents looks like that guy there three legs you can't mix them up can't get it wrong that's the name of it international rectifier and yeah I'll put the link to that chip I was uh, that's 85 Canadian so it's 65 cents American or something you might as well order if I was one mistake I made is I only ordered one I would probably order five of those in case you screw one up for the price of them uh, the chip was less than a dollar and the shipping was $25 okay uh, and the problem is my my projector is still running you can see in there and we're going to be 45 this shows over and uh it's only an hour long we're almost at the end of the show here now so it projector is fixed 100 percent working perfect we'll run out okay so i uh, reinstalled the uh, guard on the main card there and i put some new silver thermal compound you can see i smeared it on this surface and then I'm going to put this on nice and snugly over top. Okay, so I replaced a little chip, the little voltage regulator chip. And that was about uh, 25 minutes ago and I have it all back together now. And there it is running. And there's, there it is. So we're about 25 minutes into a 45 minute show and absolutely flawless so far and I have to say I love this projector it's uh, BenQ makes one of the best projectors out there and this uh, W5000 is an amazing machine so I didn't want to give it up it cost me 85 cents for the chip and then another uh, $22 for shipping and uh, yeah no sign of anything at all it looks fantastic
Looks like the day I bought it. So I think I'll run it to the end of this 45 minute show and if it doesn't mess up, uh, which I don't think it's going to at this point because it, ha it would have done it by now, it's a problem solved, easy fix. But um, I know the soldering job is not the prettiest, but it's almost impossible to solder those little miniature teeny li little legs. I'll show you the uh, what I had to use to do the whole job and I would recommend anybody who wants to do a job like this, get one of these. This guy here, it's also got the lens that flips down. Uh, you really can't do it. I, I, there's no way I could have done it without that. I think it's a four, eight times magnification plus this makes it up to 16 times magnification or something like that. And I did show you the old chip, I think. Here's the old chip right there. No bigger than a grain of rice, more like a grain of sand. You can do it. Patient, take your time, over and out.